He's trying to clear the ball. His teammate's right there. And he's like, no, no, I'm going to just kick it straight at his dick. That's an excellent strategy. And it has paid off for them. It hasn't paid off for them. <laughs> And welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Bolton. If you're still enjoying it, drop a like. That would be most helpful. Very, very helpful indeed. So today we've got Grimsby again. I, I feel like we're, Grimsby and Cambridge just will not leave me alone. They're the, Ras, the Ralph Hassenhutl of football teams. And I'd like to think that we can get off to a good start here, really, because having one away at Cambridge, we now get another team that came up with us. So one of the, in theory, weaker sides, although really the gap in skill is actually not that great. So I would expect to try to get the win here too, really, just to give us a bit of buffer early days. I checked and the board actually don't want top half, they want mid table. And I think that's actually achievable. And in a way, I guess the board's behaving a little bit more irrationally uh, on the expectations isn't the worst thing in the world because it does actually kind of match up with the fact that sometimes it feels too easy with the expectations. So we are going to have to try to do quite well. Otherwise, we will be in trouble. Board objectives for next season. Mid-table finish. Possession football. Counter-attacking football. Cure world hunger. Take a selfie with Jesus. Manage team blindfolded with both hands tied behind your back. Yeah, I'm working on the last three, but I think I've got a hook up with Jesus. Uh, me and him about to, yeah, we're about to make some stuff. Gets bought and promoted as champions. Board. Excellent. Now change everything. Biggest thing that's changed for me with the UI is I don't care about long shots as much as I used to because stats are not staring at me. I actually agree with that. Um, I don't care about long shots anymore. One of the things I always used to do with tactics was to try to minimize the number of long shots being taken. But nowadays, I've kind of come to realize that there's more than one way to make an omelet. And we're making an omelet tactic. Admittedly, our omelet is still a bit janky, but I'm all right with that because, you know, it's not about what it looks like. It's about what it tastes like. And our omelet tastes good. That analogy just went well off the rails. Honestly, I'm hoping for the best here. Booty picked up a slight injury in training, which is fine because, I mean, I think, I mean, Simons and Sarsovic could do a comfortable job there. The back four is great. Uh, I don't want to start Delphine. I want to continue persisting with my boy. Or oh, actually, we might not be able to because of the uh, injuries. Oh, no, we can. We can. There we go. That's more like it. So, Rich is up the front. Per Harrison is Grove in there with Simons and uh, Sarsovic in the midfield. Same wing backs, but then the brand new defence, which I'm really liking. Zieger behind. On the bench, Delfonso, Delaney, Ali Crawford, Doyle, Hosanna, Porteous again. Zach Clough might be able to come off the bench. Not sure yet. Now, it's worth remembering, Grimsby beat us home and away last season, and Javi Simons is already nervous. That is a bad sign. Let me pump my fists in his general direction. Hey, that worked. So with them doing the double over us last season, I would like to hope that they don't do a repeat of that this year. I feel like we may have strengthened. Obviously, they will have done too, but we will do our best. And I really do. I think it would be a statement for us to get the win against them now, to put that monkey off of our back and start looking forward a bit more. Rodel Richards, I want to see him get a goal soon, though. Um, particularly if he's going to play up front for us this season. Quite a subdued start so far, but Pert Harris will put this one into the box. And Famewu's at the back, but what a header. Akin Famewu, what a brilliant header that is. Bolton 1, Grimsby Town 0, Pert Harris this time with the assist. And it's just an excellent header. That's uh, an unexpected type of goal for us. We're not usually the best from those, but that is a, a really, really straight ball from Pert Harris. But he's put that really nicely. And Famewu's just out jumped the centre-back. Lovely header from him. And that is a good... Hey, maybe we can get a few goals from him this season. Per Harris with the ball through for Rodell Richards. Oh, it's actually a goal. It's Bolton 2, Grimsby 0. Rodell Richards scores his first goal of the season. What a lovely ball through from Pert Harris. He is looking like he could be a key player for us. I know I've said this last time around, but he's already grabbed a goal. This is an extremely good ball from Pert Harris. Like, look at that for a pass. And Richards to get a toe on it, to poke that past the goalkeeper. That is a very, very good moment for the lad. His first goal gets him up and running. Good stuff. Fleming's ball through. Surely this is offside against Rodell Richards. Can he spin it? Oh, no, he's not offside. Fleming out wide left. A third goal before half time would surely kill this. Simons. Lovely ball inside for Fleming. Oh, my goodness. Oh, John Jones. Oh, round the side for Richards. Good block again, but we are looking very tasty now. They're starting to get a bit of a link together. It's nice. We just simply look more controlled at the moment. The possession is nice. We're passing the ball around nicely, looking to carve our chances open. There's an element of we look less frenetic than we did last season, and that's a nice sign. Here we go. Chance for a ball through if Pert Harris can find it. That's oh, a lovely pass from Pert Harris. Oh, around the side. And it's three. And Anthony Sarsovic is in there. I thought Rodel Richards was going to take that on himself. Very unselfish to find Sarsovic. And I'm liking his work so far. Two and two for him. Both from open play as well. We're not even having to rely on penalties. When we want it back off them here, Fleming gets it forward so quickly that we get this little extra breakaway. And just the unselfishness of Richards to slip that one through. Lovely finish from Sarsovic. I thought Richards should have taken that on himself. It doesn't matter because he's finished it for three nil. Williams now for... Oh, it's not a good effort from Williams. Going to ring the changes, bring on some fresh legs, including Zach Clough and Guy Porteous. Well, I don't think... I think 3-0 flatters us slightly. We've not had enough chances, really, to justify a 3-0, but we have got them and taken them in the end. Uh, since those 
slightly, yeah, different players have come on. We've kind of lost our way a little bit, but that's fine. We're, we're keeping things tight at the back, seeing this game out. Oh, hello. Fleming can maybe put a good ball across, though. If you can just find the right pass. He does. And it's, oh, Richards. And it's four. Rodel Richards scores his second goal of the game. He probably should have had a hat trick at this point. Regardless, it's 4 nil to Bolton. Horrendous defending from Grimsby. They thought we were just going to try and kill the game off. But all of a sudden, Fleming makes one last run delivers a gorgeous ball and I think it hits the defender I don't know what happens there goalkeeper's made an absolute howler it's in the back of the net from Rodell Richards second goal of the season from him much more like it to see the young lad grabbing a couple of goals for us Bolton 4 Grimsby Town nil, and a very very strong start to the season albeit probably two of the easier games we could have been handed there will be tougher matches to come but I'm feeling very confident about our opportunity our chances of having a good finish this year and I think top half maybe even pushing for the playoffs you never know could be on the cards for us this season I mean Let's face it, we could end up right towards the top and challenging for promotion as well. But it's hard to say after two games against two of the weaker sides in the league, um, even though we're supposedly one of them. There you go. Bolton 4, Grimsby nil. That's certainly put our demons to bed as of last season. Pulling that one right back up. Uh, once again, great performance from uh, RCN and Rodell Richards doing brilliantly. 4 nil still favours us a little bit too much. But nevertheless, great result. Right, some games off camera. Back for Doncaster, I think. Right then, we're back. And we had a league cup tie against Bradford City. Delfonso's penalty was all it took to give us the win in this tie. Very important though. I put about as strong a squad as I could put out, although I did start Guy Porteous and Zach Clough in this game, to try and make sure that we got through because the board expects us to get to the second round and I felt it was a winnable game. We actually played very well. Probably could have won by more goals, but the result was very key. Keeps the board happy, gets them off my back and it gave me a chance to give some game time to the likes of Porteous and also Clough because I'm slowly weaning him back into first team football and I'm just so excited about Guy Porteous. Next up though in the league, we went away to Gillingham and it's a great ball in and a great header at the back post. We just couldn't really defend it very well. Played well on the night though and it was a penalty from Anthony Sarsovic, our second penalty in as many matches, that was able to grab us a draw in this game. I feel like we deserved the win were we to get it um, overall, but we guess we just have to take the point at this point. Bigger teams, better positions is one of those things. We're still unbeaten, though. That's the main factor. Sadly, the deal for uh, Fraser Blake fell through and he went to Charlton instead on quite large money. So we were unable to get that deal done. It's a shame. That would have been the final piece of the jigsaw for me, but it wasn't quite to be. Next up, though, we were away at Oxford United, struggling down towards the bottom. Terrible goalkeeping from Ziga allows Moore to slot them comfortably in front after 12 minutes. They did play very well in this game, and I think we were lucky to get the point that we did. Isgrove driving down to the line there, whipping it in, and then Pert Harris with a gorgeous, lovely volley there to make it 1-1. But look at this. <laughs> this goal is ridiculous. Uh, you you'll see, basically. So eventually, the ball ends up in the box, but it's the way that is what happens here. Eventually, it's cleared. Again. The goalkeeper makes a great stop. Atkinson kicks it against more. It literally, he's trying to clear the ball. His teammate's right there. And he's like, no, no, I'm going to just kick it straight at his dick. That's an excellent strategy. And it has paid off for them. It hasn't paid off for them. And that ended up putting us in front. And it ended Moore's chance of ever having children, which is a double whammy of bad times. And honestly, I thought we were actually going to get away with a very fortunate victory, but this was a lovely ball through from Taylor here. Winner with a great first touch, sets himself, and it's just a very, very good finish past the goalkeeper. And I think it's a fair result, really. Oxford may have been struggling, but they did not play that badly against us. And I think they were good value for the result in the end. Uh, particularly in the second half, they really did step their game up and deserved a point from this one. And lastly, we played Burnley in the League Cup. For the second season in a row, we were knocked out by Burnley. Delfonso does superbly here, driving into the box and just drilling it near post to give us the lead at Turf Moor. And I thought, brilliant, we might actually have a chance here. Um, Yeah, it wasn't quite to be, unfortunately. Burnley do have a very good side here, and they were by far the better side. Look at this for football. Rashika eventually ends up through 1-1 after half an hour. And then just before half-time, Pato, I mean, so open here, Pato was able to get through. And again, that added quality here is just able to dink this one past Ziga, and it was 2-1 to Burnley before half-time. But incredibly, in the 90th minute, a booty cross was met by Akin for Mayo, and we were able to grab ourselves an incredible equaliser here at Turf Moor. We didn't deserve it, and in the end, Burnley were able to comfortably win the penalty shootout by four goals to one. Not going to show you all the penalties, because we'll be here all day, but we screwed it up massively. And all that leaves us fifth in League One. Not a bad start by any means. Obviously, with the two wins that we had were against Cambridge down here and against Grimsby Town, who are currently 17th. The other two teams we've played were Ox uh, Oxford United and Gillingham, who are 22nd and 23rd. We could not have had an easier start to the season. And ironically, I feel like perhaps we should have done better, uh, particularly in the Gillingham game. I think there was a chance for us to win there and we... We messed it up, um, but I don't think we deserve much against Oxford United. So we've we've taken eight points so far, but they have been against teams that are right down towards the very bottom of the league. Today is a very different prospect. We are at home, but we're playing Doncaster, who are currently second in the league. Uh, this is a proper top of the table clash, and is going to be a real test of where we actually stand. We pull off a result against Doncaster, and we do need to talk about the playoffs, quite frankly. But it's hard to say at this point, really. But nevertheless, I am pumped for it. Sad times, though, as Sarsovic picked up a knock in our last game. 
and it's going to miss three to four weeks. So it is going to rely on our midfield being shifted around a little bit. I think playing Pert Harris a bit deeper, we know that doesn't work, but I wanted to give a little bit of space for Porteous and keep Pert Harris going. So rotate around a lot here. Um, Booty and Comley, I mean, is that really what we want to do right now? I think Rodol Richards must start. And I feel like maybe today, if we are going to be resting out Pert Harris, Clough maybe through the middle isn't the worst idea in the world. But Harris is a bit knackered. Iqbal's been called up to the Iraq squad, so that's cool for him. Uh, might end up costing us some money, though, because I do think he has an international wage course. I don't think it's much. They didn't require much. But a booty comedy midfield pairing, is that what I really want to do here? Politic is as well back, and that's awesome. I don't want to start him today, but he might get a position. He might come off the bench. It might actually genuinely have to be a booty comedy partnership in the midfield, because uh, Simons is also injured as well. So that's uh, cost us a bit in the midfield depth. Even a draw would, for me, be an excellent result in a game like this if we do want to kick, stick around this part of the league. But I am concerned that a slightly weaker midfield could cost us as Clough is through. Zach Clough, and oh, what a lovely dink. Zach Clough scores on his return to the Bolton lineup. His first goal for the club since his return. Five minutes into the game, ball little knock through the middle and Clough makes a gorgeous run. It's Bolton 1, Doncaster Rovers nil. After a few matches of disappointment in the league, this is a gorgeous little ball through from Richards. First time, and Clough, the cheek of that, that right there, lovely little dink. Five minutes in and we have the lead. Really, really good. That's the kind of leadership we need. That would send us into second place and above Doncaster, most importantly. Clough is filling in really nicely here. Oh, poor touch from Fleming. He's got it back, though. And it's Clough again. Oh, go on, Regan. Go on, Regan. Oh, what a great strike from Regan Booty, that is. He, he's due a booty banger at some point, right? I always forget to switch it back after we do the highlights on director. I do apologize for that. Is Grove, Comley. Oh, he's got to find Booty here. Booty with tons of room. Oh, he should have scored, or he should have at least shot, perhaps. Part of me is actually tempted to perhaps drop our line a bit and play a slightly lower press in some of these matches. Oh, what a ball. And Clough is in there again, and Doncaster are all over the shop in the first 20 minutes here. And temporarily, we are top of the league. Only on goal difference, of course, but nevertheless, Fleming's down that side again. Whipped in, and it is... Oh, wow, what a finish. Lloyd Isgrove to the back post. Fleming, so so comfortable we've looked in the first half here we haven't looked this comfortable in the couple of the off-camera games against either oxford or um gillingham but today at home we look like we're making this stadium a fortress the team just looked really cohesive here fleming with a lovely ball in isgrove makes that cheap lovely little run and it's a lovely finish i've said lovely too much lovely and clough has managed to pick this up isgrove there's runners left and right he's got it back to zach clough who's looked very very strong today he's just got that little extra bit of quality oh what a pass <laughs> what a little flick if this turns into a goal oh never mind <laughs> We done ruined it. Clough again finding Fleming. He is finding that pass regularly. Fleming's ball across again. And Isgrove. Oh my God. Isgrove to the back post. He scored his second goal that's almost identical on the night. Brandon Fleming. I mean, this is working very well today. I think Zach Clough is finding really nice passes into that channel there, which Fleming's able to run into. And they're just not getting out to Fleming fast enough. Fleming? Yeah. And a great strike again from Isgrove. He's finished off with two spectacular finishes so far. Wow. Richards can bring it down. Counter-attack potentially is ghosted past his man. Can he make it 4-0 after 21 minutes? It's a poor effort, unfortunately. And we've taken full advantage of that. Ziga might go for the long ball this time, and he does. And Richards is straight behind. Wow, we don't normally create these types of chances. Richards is through, and he's got to finish, and he doesn't again. Also, um, Greenidge has told me he wants to leave. Uh, he wants to go to Shrewsbury Town for some reason. And I did try to talk him around because I didn't really want to lose a player like that just in case. But I've agreed that if they can pay 75 grand, we will let him go. So far, they haven't coughed up the money yet, so we might be okay. Oh, Isgrove's in again. Can he score the hat-trick? Great stop again from the defender. I mean, as first halves go, this has been just about perfect. Taylor's ball in. Thorn at the back post. And oh, no. God, who did that go in off? It's Bolton 3, Doncaster 1. Is there a route back into the game for Donny? I don't think so. But it looks like this defense... It's surely gone off the defender. Thorn wins the challenge. Oh, no. Carlo Ziga. I mean, that's an own goal, isn't it? Like, how on earth is that his goal? Well... It was all going so well until right there. I still think we're comfortably on top and should be able to see this game out, but annoying to give up the clean sheet in such a fashion. But barring an incredible turnaround in their form in the second half, we're in a good position to see this game out and get the win. Hopefully. Anyway, with Cambridge now winning 2-0 against the McDonald's. I think Doncaster have definitely tightened up. Uh, that early sort of 20-minute blitz in the early part of this game just completely caught them off guard. Although Fleming's into this position again. What's he got up his sleeve this time, Brandon Fleming? Oh, he's a wizard with the ball. Rodo Richards. Gethin Jones getting into the box there. Thorn with the ball through. And oh, he's in! He's Oh my god, Fajiri Okuna Behiri, uh, sorry, Behiri? Yeah, Behiri, perhaps? It makes it bottom three, Doncaster Rovers two. They haven't created much in this game, but when they got through, yet yeah, Taylor brings the ball down here, and he just seems to be able to get this back inside of Kundi, and it just opens up this ball for Thorne. It's a great ball through, but I think the defenders could have tracked that one better, but he's managed to finish that one off with a plomb, and it's now bottom three, Doncaster two. Okay, they're showing some teeth now. Look, he goes into the box. 
options. Right, okay, make sure we defend this properly. But, oh, it's whipped to throw it. Oh, no! <laughs> he scored again! Bowl three, Doncaster... Th wow, okay. That... What a performance from the second. I mean, they have... Oh, my God. Bolt and bottle jobs. Jesus. 3-0 up, and Doncaster have come back. It looked like there was an absolute pinball machine in the box there. It's a great ball in, but how do we not deal with this? What even happens? Whip through. It de oh, my goodness. It deflects off of, I think, Brandon Fleming, and it hits him and goes straight in. Somehow, he was already anticipating the slide, and I was just about to make some tactical changes to try and shut up shop a little bit, just to make sure that we held onto the lead. Bolton three, Doncaster three. Ball in. Ali Crawford there. We're not done yet. And it's cleared away by Doncaster. Wow. Okay. They're proving why they were up the top a little bit. Um, I still think we kind of deserve the win, but you can't if you defend as badly as that. And a bit unfortunate, perhaps, with that one, but that's just how it goes. Iqbal, Fleming. Can we take the lead back again? Fleming's ball through and a wonderful block off of Richard's shot. There's still time for us to grab the win. Yeah, it looks like it is going to be Bolton Wanderers three, Doncaster three. What a comeback from them. But also, what an absolute bottle job from us here to be 3-0 up against a team that are very, very strong. And frankly, we played very, very well. Deserved our three goals. Um, I think perhaps they're a bit fortunate to grab three out of what they created, but that's just how it goes. Isgrove was brilliant. Second half, we just sort of lost a bit of intensity and perhaps the substitutions didn't help with that. But Okena Bihire made some serious... Birhi. Okena Birhi. There we go. Um, yeah, he was very, very good. Got fortunate with the last goal, but that's we can't do much about that. That's just how it is. And that now puts us sixth. Still in the playoffs, though, which is the most important factor. Uh, nine points from our first five games isn't too bad. We're still only two points off the top. It's not the end of the world, really. Although we are starting to see, you know, difficulties a bit more now. Anyway, not great. But hey, we're newly promoted and we're still sixth in League One. What have we got to complain about? So next episode, we're going to do Ipswich. And there's bound to be some more games in here somewhere as well. Uh, because there just always is. So we're bound to come back and do some more stuff in there too. So if you've enjoyed this episode, uh, the bottle job is real. Drop a like, that'd be awesome. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be sick too. Um, I stream on Tuesdays, Thursdays, over on Twitch. So go follow there too. There's also the VOD channel to catch up. So go subscribe there. Link in the description. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.